Hey, welcome to another episode of Rooftop Rally Point. Glad you're here. Um, let me ask you a question. Have you ever landed on somebody in a meeting or with one of your kids or something like that and you're just, you're just afterwards, you're just knowing that that was the wrong approach? Like you know it in your, in your chest cavity. That happened, happened to me not too long ago um, this past summer. We had a great time with the kids. All the boys were home um, and they were just last night, they were, you know, about to go back to school and they were messing around in, in the house, in the kitchen. It was almost supper time. And somehow, now, and I, I'm not kidding you, Cooper, 18, Braden, 16, Cooper about to go off to college, going to train to be an FBI agent, right? Somehow he manages to dump 20 ounces of milk onto his brother's head in the kitchen. And then both of them tell me it was an accident. I wasn't laughing then, I lost it. We were about to eat, there was milk all over the floor, there was milk dripping off Braden's nose. Um, I mean, it was, uh, Wes is over here getting stung by bees, I think. Um, but you know, it was, it was hilarious. And uh, I landed all over them though, I didn't think it was funny. I landed all over them so bad and really just chewed them out. Told them they were disrespectful, told them they weren't thinking about us. We had been in here cooking all night. and. If you could have seen the looks on their faces when I did that. I mean, this is just 48 hours after they had made Monty and me these amazing birthday videos that took six months to produce, right? But that's where I was. I landed on them with all four feet. And, you know, thankfully I went back just a little bit later. I put my arms around them and I was like, guys, that's on me. I responded way too harsh here. I apologize. And we put it back in the box and everything was cool. But it was just a really poignant lesson to me that all the years that I've been working, what we call the Laurentian skills and rooftop leader, you know, connecting, uh, inspiring people to follow you to the rooftop, interpersonal skills. All the years that I've been doing that, I violated it big time with my own boys. Now, did they need a butt chewing? Yeah, probably. But the way that I went at it was complete coercion. And, you know, here recently and working with a lot of senior business leaders, I see the same thing. Someone makes a bad trade, you land on them with all four feet. Someone violates an HR policy, you call them out in front of everybody at the meeting, right? It's just what we seem to do these days. And what I'm telling you guys is that it's ineffective as a primary tool, right? Coercion, what we call the hammer, where you, you know, you basically cajole, push, intimidate, demand, because I said so, damn it, that's why. That is primarily an ineffective tool in today's leadership climate. Now, I know some of you old school, I'm old school too, you're sitting there going, hold on a second now. All this touchy-feely, you know, uh, kumbaya stuff, I don't buy into it. That's not how I grew up. I get it, right? But what I'm telling you is there is a time and place for the hammer. There is a time and place for coercion. But in this day and age, it needs to be surgical and it certainly shouldn't be the default leadership mechanism. And I'm gonna to talk to you about why that is. The bottom line is if the only tool in your kit bag is a hammer, then every problem you face in life is gonna be a nail. And there is a reason that we are in the crappy situation we are today socially, right? We live in what I call the triple P of environment, pissed off, put upon Pisces. Two thirds of Americans don't trust their neighbor and it's climbing. We don't trust banks, politicians, media, or law enforcement like we used to. Our institutions that were once the vanguards of leadership and trust in this country are no longer trusted by ordinary citizens. But we don't trust our neighbor either. Think about how that shows up in your teams, your lines of business, with prospects who are seeing you in a crowded marketplace, right? With your kids on the middle school bus. Put upon, 85% of Americans, according to Gallup, are disengaged. They lack purpose, right? They're looking at their senior leaders and mid-level managers with a jaundiced eye because they can't connect to their vision. And finally, Pisces. Most Americans will click away in eight seconds, right? That's an attention span less than a goldfish, according to Microsoft. That's the world we live in. Distrustful, disengaged, distracted. And if you go in there with your hands on your hips and traveling Overwatch, telling everybody how it's gonna be every time you turn around, not only are they not gonna be connected to you, right? 
in the worst case, they're going to become a social insurgent to the very movement you're trying to create. They will tube your goals, show apathy towards your vision, be lackadaisical on sales simply because you pissed them off. You threatened them. You came at them. You called them out. You took their honor down a notch, right? We are still primal creatures. We just dress better. We're still Neanderthals in our core at a biological level. We still look at honor, shame, revenge, all of those things, scarcity. And yes, human connection and reciprocity the same way our ancestors did. We just dress better. And so if you come at people and you thump them in the chest all the time, this trust erosion that we have today, this distraction and disengagement is going to put you even further away from your people, not closer. And they're only going to follow you so far when the chips are down or you need them to tell your story of your company when you're not around, forget it. It's not going to happen. It's just not, right? The leaders, according to Daniel Coyle, who build high-performing cultures have three things, right? They have um, a sense of psychological safety in the room. There's a deep sense of human connection, and there's a shared vision that we're all going forward together. For any of that to be possible, I'm hanging in there, Wes. Coyle says that there has to be a vulnerability loop between the leader and those who follow. Now, whether that's your children, your sales associates, or your clients, right? So if the only thing you do is swing the hammer, it's going to put you at a disadvantage. My recommendation to you is that you lead with connection. Look at the connection itself. Look at the trust levels. When's the last time you sat down with your people and just focused on the relationship as the asset? David Knorr in his book, Relationship Economics, says the relationship is the business leader's greatest off-book asset. All right? So here's what I'd like you to try to do. This is what I'd like you to try to do on your own. I'd like you to find someone who's very relevant in your life. It could be an employee. It could be a peer at work. It could be your spouse. It could be one of your kids. And because they're relevant, you're going to do this work. I want you to think about the next time you have an altercation with them or a high stakes moment where the temptation is to land on them with all four feet, to be prescriptive, to tell this is how it's going to be. You know what I'm talking about. What I'd rather you do is two things. One, lead in with a thoughtful, open-ended question. So like if it's something that went wrong, like what happened with Cooper and Braden, Hey guys, can y'all tell me what, what happened here? Can, can you just tell me what happened? How did, how did this occur? Braden, why is there milk dripping off of your nose? Right? Allow them to tell you what happened. It costs you nothing. It will allow your emotional temperature to come down. It's what I should have done. And then I want you to ask permission to give your perspective. Okay, would you guys mind just for a second here um, if I share with you why this is upsetting? Okay. And then I do it. Now you think, okay, yeah, whatever, dude. That that would work with your kids. The guy that made the bad trade, rather than landing on him in front of everybody, what if you said, um, all right, what happened, guys? Tell me, how did we get here? They tell you. All right, would you guys mind if I shared with you a time I made a bad trade and what happened? And you take your own scars and your own struggle and you share it with them what happened. And this is how humans learn. This is how we connect. This is how we build reciprocity. Does it take more effort on your part? Yeah. It does, but it's also how you build a culture of reciprocity, a culture of high performance, a culture of connection where people run up the ladders after you, not because they have to, but because they choose to. If those skills make sense to you, if some things just went off that you were like, you know what, that makes sense to me, you definitely need to come to our Rooftop Leadership Live. Uh, It's gonna be down in Tampa, Florida, October 4th through 6th, 2019. That's a Friday through a Sunday people from all kinds of cool disciplines, and we get into this stuff. We use storytelling and active listening, home, uh, leg work, homework before the legwork, all of this deep dive stuff to help you make better connections, have better sales, more revenue for your nonprofit, all of those kinds of things. So make sure you join us at the next Rooftop Leadership Live. I'll see you on the rooftop.